You are so disrespectful. He is going to fall off a cliff. Shut the hell up. That's not even close to my best. They're wrong. And I don't give a damn that they agree with me or not. Time for Final Take, where Stephen A gives us a little food for thought in his final word of the day. Stephen A, take us home. If Al Davis, just win, baby, were alive today, he'd tell you that winning actually isn't everything. He'd wax eloquently about ethics and principles, about how having the decency to simply tell the truth matters just as much as anything else. And he'd do so in the throes of reminding us all that such platitudes, such basic honorable things, should never be associated with Mr. Lane Kiffin. So much for wondering how one ends up going from Alabama to Florida Atlantic in the sport of college football. This is not to condemn Kiffin, mind you. America, after all, is the land of second chances. We all make mistakes, but damn. Kiffin appears to have made so many. Perhaps it's time to stop and applaud before asking him, how in the hell did you get anyone to give you another head coaching job? Let's rewind, people. There was the bizarre press conference in September 2008 where Al Davis got out of the sick bed just to essentially announce to the world that Kiffin was a pathological liar. Then there was the second chance Kiffin received when he got the head job at Tennessee. He promptly called out Urban Meyer, then the coach of Florida, before he could pass gas. Then he lost to him. Then he left for UFC, USC, reneging on a promise to stay at Tennessee. They still don't want this man in the state, y'all. Of course, we all know what happened, what followed. More losses than were expected. Just as many excuses as was expected. And then ultimately, Kiffin being fired at the airport after getting grabbed off the team bus. The school, that is USC, wouldn't even allow him to ride back on campus with the players. So why are these things important today, you might ask? Because no matter how successful you are as an offensive coordinator, or that you have national championships on your resume, or that Nick Saban is vouching for you. You're leaving Alabama, where Saban has amassed 113 wins and four national titles over 10 years. And you're doing this to go to Florida Atlantic, which has 76 wins in the school's 16-year history. Championships to them would be simply having a winning record. College coaches, as we all know, are supposed to be true leaders of men. They're the ones cultivating young men into manhood, instilling values, discipline, and responsibility. No one doubts Saban's resume on such matters, no matter what some critics may say. But Kiffin? Come on now. Come on now. Saban may say Kiffin is ready. Perhaps. But one would like to think he's learned from his mistakes, that he's been humbled along the way. I'm speaking about Kiffin here. Here's the safest bet in all of this, though. No matter what happens with Kiffin this time around, we all know. He ain't staying for long, not a Florida Atlantic. So the only suspense down the road ultimately will entail this. Yo, Kiffin, why'd you leave this time? Mediocre team and big D. <laughs> That's what makes this funny. spoken on the subject what's your reaction well i'm not sad um i'm relieved for the city of los angeles i'm relieved for uh, los angeles rams fans everywhere um and i stand by that um i want to modify uh something you know in the tease leading into the show i didn't know what mike and mike were going to ask me and they asked me about mike and, uh, about jeff fish's firing and i joked around a little bit about it and then you know, I, I caught myself because obviously the man's lost his job. There's nothing that's funny about it. So I need to show the proper respect 
and treat this with the seriousness that it deserves. And I will do so in saying exactly what I'm about to say as I'm looking in this camera. It is time. It has long been timed. Jeff Fisher should have been fired years ago. I don't regret a single damn word that I said, and I stand by it. Not the joking side, but the serious side. And let me take this a step further, just to remind everybody of what we're talking about here. We are talking about a man that coached in, has coached in the NFL for 22 years. We are talking about a man that has not won a playoff game since 2003. We are talking about a man that has not had a winning record in seven years. We are talking about a man that has a resume that is so atrocious, it elevates the importance of the Rooney Rule because it illuminates and highlights even more so why there's such a problem when it comes to the issues of hiring as it pertains to minorities or anybody else. Jeff Fisher is so bad, white folks should complain about Jeff Fisher having a job. That's how bad it is, okay? Because there are white candidates. Forget, forget all the stuff about, forget blacks, forget Hispanics, forget minorities, forget everybody. Let's talk about white America. White America should have a problem with the fact that Jeff Fisher kept his job for this long. And here is why. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask of you in all seriousness, how in God's name are folks on the come up, regardless of what your ethnicity is, is supposed to get an opportunity when a man who has failed, who has missed the postseason in, fifth, in 16 seasons out of 22, how in God's name is somebody else supposed to get a chance when that man is allowed to keep his job? Would there have ever been a Mike Tomlin? Would there have ever been a Sean Payton? Would there have ever been a Jay Gruden? Would there have ever been a Mike McCarthy? When that level of ineptitude is continuously rewarded, it sends the message that we ain't talking about a meritocracy. We're talking nepotism. We're talking favoritism. We're talking all of the isms that we're supposed to abhor in this great country of ours because it's supposed to be the land of opportunity, not the land of who you know. And that's what land that Jeff Fisher was living in. Stan Kroenke allowed it for far too long. And the city of Los Angeles and pundits and commentators everywhere stood up with your boy and recognized that it was just flagrantly obvious that this is something that could not be allowed. He needed to go. It was the right decision. He should have been gone. And oh, by the way, I got others on the list, too. They need to go as well. We'll be talking about them in a little while. I will not apologize for it. I will be sensitive to his family. But last time I checked, we're only talking about Jeff Fisher's emotions here. Too many people don't get to lose their job and still walk away with 10 to $14 million. Coming to them after years of failure. But Jeff Fisher gets it like that. Forgive me if my sympathy isn't that great. I think he'll be fine. I really, really do. You know, I'm surprised that more people haven't had a Barzini moment about this, Stephen A. Smith. Remember from The Godfather Part 1? Yes. Tatalia could have never fought, outfought Santino, but it wasn't until this day that I realized it was Barzini all along. Yeah. Everyone's pointing at Jeff Fisher. I think there's a good reason that goes beyond a good old boys network why he was kept around. You know, a fish rots from the head down, and the Rams at this moment are a bad franchise, and they've been a bad franchise for a while. You know, Les Snead and, and, and Jeff Fisher kind of came in as a pair, more or less. And what's Les Snead done as the GM? How are those drafts gone? How many, how many top draft picks can you whiff on? Yeah, of course, you can point to some that worked out. Every team has some that worked out. But they've missed on a lot. This has been a bad team for a long time. And as long as Jeff Fisher's around, Les Snead doesn't have to take the heat, right? Because the coach is there. I think he probably wanted Jeff Fisher around as long as possible. And what about Stan Kroenke? Look at this. Here's some stats on, on uh, the Rams franchise. No winning seasons since the first term of George W. Bush. Think about that for a second. Five season stretch. They went 15 and 65. That is the worst in league history. F 15 and 65. Um, and, and these two, as a Sneed and Fisher, were signed to extensions before the season began. So you can point to, to, to Jeff Fisher, but what about the guy above him, Les Snead? 
What about the guy above him? Stan Kroenke, who's a brilliant businessman, obviously. But that's a poorly run franchise. What other franchises does Stan Kroenke have a stake in? The Colorado Avalanche, the Denver Nuggets, and apparently the Arsenal Football Club in England. You know what they have in common? Not being run extremely well. None of them very good. None of them relevant. So what issue is it really? Is it, is, is, you know, I, when I look at it, Jeff Fisher mm-hmm. is Tatalia, and Barzini is actually Stan Kroenke, or at least Les Snead. And I think in Fisher's absence now, we will see the focus shift to the next guy up the, uh, on the ladder, which is Snead. And then after that, you got to look at the owner. Fish rots from the head down, and what we have here well, is a rotten fish. Well, let's be clear about a couple of things, Max. Number one, uh, he had Steve McNair rode those coattails to a Super Bowl appearance, coming within a yard and a half or so uh, of capturing a Super Bowl title. Um, and ever since then, he came across as somebody who, who was better than the players. I know he had a reputation as a player's coach, but I don't see how you could have a, rep- a reputation as a player's coach if you are somebody that can't get the players to perform for you. That's number one. Number two, I think it's important to point this out. Do you know, Max, that even on the way out the door, Jeff Fisher was actually done a favor because his loss last week tied him with Dan Reeves to being the losingest coach in the history of the mm-hmm. NFL. Another loss this week against the Seattle Seahawks, which is surely coming, by the way. A loss to the Seattle Seahawks this week will have officially made Jeff Fisher the worst most losing his coach in NFL history. Not to say that Dan Reeves is that way because Dan Reeves went to a couple of Super Bowls, but you get where I'm coming from. My point to you is this. These are the kind of things that happen. And I think it's very important to point this out. My issue, I'm not up here trying to get people fired. My point is, is that if you are in a results-oriented business and you don't produce results, how many people get the opportunities you have? If we can't be it's fair. It's not personal. Exactly. I don't know the man. Well, it's actually, not, Stephen A., let me personal. turn that around for you for sure, a second. Sure. It's not that you're up there trying to get someone fired. It's that you're up there trying to get someone hired, a more deserving candidate. And when well someone said. doesn't get fired, Absolutely. when it's not meritocratic, when it's inefficient that way, it denies opportunity to candidates who've earned it. And you brought up, well, white people should be for the Jeff Fisher firing. Yeah, I think, you know, football fans want their team to win. Period. And if the coach is black or white, and uh, unless you have real issues, those are things you got to work out yourself if you do. Listen. They don't care what color uh, the coach is if the football team is winning. At least they should. Listen, let me tell you something right now. I think Marvin Lewis should have been gone years ago, okay? It ain't about no damn ethnicity. It's about results. I think he should have been gone years ago. But it's pretty hard to make that argument when a man goes to five straight playoff appearances when you keep Jeff Fisher employed. And it's pretty hard for dudes on the come up who work their tails off, black, white, and otherwise, all throughout the NFL and throughout college sports. It's pretty hard for them to get an opportunity when you got individuals like Jeff Fisher who are allowed to keep their job. I'm sure there's some role he can play. I'm sure he's a smart football man and there's some kind of contribution that he can make. I'm not saying the man doesn't deserve a job. I'm saying he does not deserve to be a head coach in the National Football League. He has had his time. It has long been over and thank God it's finally official. We'll leave it there and we'll continue to track obviously who the potential candidates are moving forward.